Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host for this edition, where I've got a few news stories I'm going to talk about from the last week or so. Hope everybody's staying safe and doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Let me get right into the stories. First story is about General Motors. I've talked a lot about them in the last couple of weeks, but that's because they've been doing a lot of announcements. So they just announced that they're investing $6.6 billion in the Orion EV plant, or Orion, depending on how you pronounce that. And they're also looking to do uh, a third U.S. battery cell factory. So it's their largest single investment announcement in history, pledging to put more than $7 billion U.S. into four Michigan manufacturing sites, which will create about 4,000 new jobs jobs and safeguard a thousand existing ones. Now the largest part of the total investment, about four billion, is allocated to convert that Orion assembly in, or Orion assembly plant into an electric truck manufacturing plant that will roll out the Chevrolet Silverado EV and electric GMC Sierra pickups from 2024 onwards. Now, GM says that the production of the Chevrolet Bolt EV and EUV will continue during the plant's conversion, even though at this very moment no Bolt EVs are being produced. However, production, once started again, will continue during the plant's conversion. The Silverado EV and electric GMC Sierra have already been confirmed for production at Factory Zero in the Detroit Hamtrak uh, area as well, Hamtramck, excuse me, making Orion or Orion Assembly GM's second facility to build the Altium-based full-size trucks. Now, when both plants are fully ramped up, GM says it will have an annual production capacity of about 600,000 full-size electric trucks, and for all production combined, a target of 1 million EVs by 2025. That's only three years away, folks, so they have a lot of work to do, but I think they'll get there. Now, the Orion assembly will become GM's third U.S. assembly plant being transformed for production of Altium-powered EVs, following, as I mentioned, the Factory Zero and the Detroit, Hamtramck, Michigan, and Spring Hill assembly plants in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Now, the second major investment announcement that, that was part of this $7 billion with regards to building of a new Altium Cells battery cell plant at the Lansing site in Michigan. Joint venture partners GM and LG Energy Solutions will invest $2.6 billion to build the Altium Cells third U.S. battery cell manufacturing plant after those being constructed in Ohio and in Tennessee. Now, this investment is expected to create more than 1,700 new jobs when the 2.8 million square foot um, plant becomes fully operational in late 2024. Now, the new plant will supply battery cells to the Orion assembly and other GM assembly plants with Altium cells, expecting the facility to have a capacity of about 50 gigawatt hours of battery cell capacity when they're running in full production. GM says these investments will accelerate its drive to become the EV market leader in North America by 2025. Well, that could be debatable, but I'm glad that they're reaching for a goal. Uh, again, however, I do applaud them for uh, setting these ambitious goals and targets, and that's what it's all about. Good going, GM. Keep it going. Now, switching gears to the Renault-Nissan relationship, they've come out with some announcements as well. They want to do a lot more, and they're going to put money behind that. They want to work more closely together to make electric cars. And uh, last week, they had this announcement. And they detailed a $26 billion investment plan over the next five years to stay competitive in the switch to cleaner driving. Now, the two-decade-old alliance, which also includes Mitsubishi Motors, stated that the Alliance plans five common platforms for EVs, up from four. They want to build a combined lineup of 35 EVs by 2030. Four out of five of the models to share common platforms by 2026. Now, to power the new EVs, the partners said they plan to secure 220 gigawatt hours of battery production capacity by 2030 through their supply chain alliances. Now, if I, look at, if I look at those manufacturers individually, Renault unveiled a five-year 10 billion euro EV strategy with a plan to launch 10 models and to have EVs account for 90% of all their models produced by 2030. Nissan plans to launch 23 electrified vehicles by 2030, including 15 pure EVs, or all-electrics. It also said that they want to reduce 
lithium ion battery costs by 65% within eight years and introduce potentially game changing all solid state batteries by March of 2029. Interesting, they've actually set such as a defined date. Nissan also plans to replace its micro car in Europe with a new EV using one of these common platforms. Now, there wasn't any information from Mitsubishi on their plans, so nothing was detailed there. So congratulations, Nissan and Renault, at at least putting some plans together. Hopefully you can shrink some of those targets down and do it faster, but keep it going. I'm going to talk about Kia now. They've announced pricing in the U.S. for the EV6, uh, which is their 2022 brand new all electrics based on the uh, eGMP platform, as, as is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. So the pricing is as follows. They have the light rear-wheel drive version at $40,900. Then they have the wind rear-wheel drive version. You try saying that fast three times. At $47,000 US. They have the wind dual motor uh, all-wheel drive at $50,900. They have the GT line, which comes in a rear-wheel and a dual motor all-wheel drive, with the rear wheel being 51.2 and the all-wheel drive bumping that up to $55,900. Now remember, the EV6 has an EPA-rated range of up to 310 miles, just shy of 500 kilometers, and with the largest 77.4 kilowatt-hour battery pack. Now a smaller 58 kilowatt-hour battery pack will be available for the light rear-wheel drive variant, is what I've heard. Now, us knuckleheads are still waiting for official EV6 pricing. However, we should see Canadian vehicles uh, hit the shoreline soon. And all the Canadian vehicles, by the way, will include a heat pump where that is optional on some of the U.S. spec trims. There's been a lot of talk and a lot of buzz about this model as well because it's a very nice model, just like the Ionic 5. And Kia sold out at the initial 200 reservation GT lineup last October. Seems to be a common thread now. Everybody's selling out of their initial run of EVs. Uh, but we should see more of these show up on North American roads later this year. Switch gears, go back across the pond and talk about a company called Fox E-Mobility. Now, they're based in Germany, and they've completed the overall design of one of their new electric car series called the Mia. The first prototypes are planned for the current year, and series production in cooperation with a vehicle manufacturer is scheduled to start sometime in 2024. Now, the new vehicle model is called the Mia 2.0 and is a further development of the predecessor model, you guessed it, called the Mia 1.0, which came out way back in 2012. So they've been working on this for about 10 years. The new Mia model has a length of 3.2 meters, weighs less than 1,000 kilograms, and has a load volume of about 1,500 liters. Now, the company specifies a range of about 200 kilometers, but you can get a second optional battery, which can also be retrofitted, and it doubles the range to 400 kilometers, which makes it very respectable, especially since it's an urban target runabout. The batteries will come from a newly inked deal partnership with a Slovakian battery company called Innobat Auto. No further technical details were provided, nor does it state who will be the vehicle manufacturer for the start of production. Now, according to Fox E-Mobility, the Mia is the only electric car project that will be financed and developed exclusively in Europe and built in Europe with European partners. Fox E-Mobility locates the vehicle as an ideal solution for commercial mobility, especially needs in urban areas. You know, things like uh, delivery services and passenger vehicles as potential users. And they've also tantalized this by saying that the price will be, quote, well below 20,000 euros. So that would make it quite competitive in that market space. And I really wish them a success. So keep your eyes on Fox E-Mobility. Staying in Germany, I want to talk about BMW. They've announced that all good things must come to an end and that they're going to stop production or end production of the all-electric i3 that's currently being produced in Leipzig in July of this year. It seems BMW needs to take some time to convert this plant over for the production of future electric models, including the new generation Mini Countryman with a pure electric drive variant. Now, it was suspected that the i3 would receive another model update to make it fit for sale by 2024. However, such an update failed to materialize, making an earlier end more likely. 
as the i3 is based on a standalone platform with an aluminum chassis and carbon fiber passenger cell, the production facilities for the Countryman will have to be rebuilt, and that'll be based on BMW's FAAR front-wheel drive architecture. The BMW i3 is also being discontinued because the electric versions of the new X1, the iX1, will be launched later this year as well. And I've reported BMW is definitely spooling up a lot more of the iX model lines. Production of the i3, if you recall, launched in 2013. It's been around for a long time, and they have sold more than 200,000 units as they clipped that back in October of 2021. So by the time that the i3 is discontinued this July, BMW will probably have produced and sold about 250,000 of those units. So sad to see the i3 go. I know some people that have the i3, they absolutely love it, but all things must move forward. And again, I think it's a good announcement from BMW as they plan their electrified future. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is my EV pick of the year. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, I really wish you would. Uh, and all my contact information is at the end of the show. Uh, for the last uh, three years, you can see some of the certificates behind me that I do. I've been, I've been picking EVs, uh, all electric vehicles, that I think are going to have some sort of impact on the marketplace to help move forward EV adoption. So it's not necessarily based on total unit sales or a specific price or combination. It's really a combination of a lot of factors. And I do go across different geos. My first year EV pick of the year was the Kia uh, Nero EV in 2019. In 2020, I picked the Model 3 because that was a breakout year where they really started to crank out production and sell a lot of Model 3s and get them out so people could really start noticing EVs out in the marketplace because Tesla is a standout brand, of course. And then last year, I picked the Wuling Mini EV because it was revolutionizing the Chinese marketplace and they've done quite well selling almost 500,000 of those units in just a short 18 months. So they've done quite well. Well, my EV pick of the year for this year shouldn't really be that much of a surprise. It's the Ford F-150 Lightning. And I picked that because Ford has really started the pickup truck uh, evolution, I would say, uh, and revolution into the electrified marketplace. Yes, we've got Rivian, we've got Lat Atlas, we've got Wolf Trucks, we've got all kinds of other you know, startups that are out there. But Ford is the leading brand for 44 plus years. They've been the number one pickup manufacturer. 44 years, folks. You hadn't heard me wrong. They've been leading that segment. And for them to take an iconic brand, the F-150, and fully electrify it and make it different is a big deal. And to me, it was another pivotable tip. Pivotal? Pivotable? Is that right? A <laughs> tipping point. I'm going to get some comments on that for the EV marketplace and the acceleration to EV adoption. So Ford is uh, F-150 is my EV pick of the year. And uh, here's my certificate that I'm going to, uh, I've already electronically sent Ford uh, Canada and some folks that, so hopefully they'll, they'll enjoy it for what it's worth. Uh, but hopefully you agree that this is that that is a pivotal announcement that has started yet another movement and started to spread electrification deeper into really a lot of the heartland subcultures throughout North America and the rest of the world. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you are not subscribing on YouTube, please consider doing so. That would be great. You can click the bell, get notified, turn your notifications on, all that kind of good stuff. If you are a Patreon supporter, thank you very much. I'm always very humbled by that. Everybody, please stay safe. Continue to follow public health. We are getting through this. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it should be a really busy year for the EV revolution for me and for the EV marketplace. So keep watching. And until next show, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.